right, so now, with that said, let's now talk about some of these diseases, okay? The anterior pituitary. All right, so anterior pituitary disorders. We can either have hyperpituitaryism, meaning that the pituitary gland is going to release a lot of, uh, a lot of hormones, okay? Usually, it can be hyperplasia of the uh, anterior pituitary or some kind of malignancy. It's rare that that would happen. It's more likely it's, a, it's an adenoma, which is a benign tumor that usually is going to spit out or secrete one particular hormone. It can do more than one, but usually it stays with just one. And it could get enlarged. Okay? Um, so adenomas are the most common kind of uh, pituitary uh, tumor. And if there's symptoms, they usually have a headache because it's pressing on something in the brain. They usually have visual disturbances, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And whatever specific hormonal signs and symptoms you'll get with that. So if it's a growth hormone, then things are going to start growing. If it's, a pro if it's prolactin, then it's going to make more milk come out of the breast. So it's more specific to those two. So you have hyperpituitarism, but then you could also have hypopituitarism. And it's when you're going to hyposecrete a certain hormone. Now, the, pituitary, the anterior pituitary gland is a very resilient uh, gland. So usually you have to actually destroy about 75% of it for you to actually have some kind of symptoms. Okay? Um, usually, and this is kind of a weird thing, but you would think adenomas, some kind of tumor, is going to produce a lot of hormones. Right? Bigger the, the, the tumor, more hormones that come out of it. Well, sometimes they can be destructive adenomas, meaning as it grows, it can actually destroy the cells inside and, and pressing against them so that the, those cells aren't producing a certain kind of hormone. So in some cases, they can be destructive. That's the most common uh, form of, uh, of, of hypopituitarism in, in the uh, uh, anterior pituitary gland. Okay. Uh, there could be ischemic issues, and we'll deal with that called Sheehan's, wait, wait a second, uh, Sheehan's uh, <coughs> disease, and we'll talk about that during childbirth, brain trauma, surgery, even a stroke to the anterior pituitary. That's less oxygen going there. You're not going to be able to function. You know, that, that part of the anterior pituitary is not going to be able to function. Okay? Question. Is it the same way those adenomas secrete the hormone? Is it because it's the same It depends on what part, because when you learn about it, there's at, um, at acidophils and there's basophils, and there's certain ones that actually, so any of those particular, which I'm not going to ask about, but any one of those particular cells, um, acidophils, uh, that's the one that actually becomes uh, neoplastic. And those are the ones that are actually doing that. Okay? Question? Okay. So, um, so let's start talking about each one of these, um, these hormones that come out of here in these diseases. So let's start off with prolactin, okay? Prolactin, let's say there's an excess amount of it, okay? An excess amount of it, we have something called prolactinoma, okay? It's the most common pituitary adenoma that, that we have. 30% of these tumors in the uh, anterior pituitary are um, prolactinomas. They're usually benign. If you know what prolactin does, then you have an idea of what's going to happen. All right? Prolactin makes milk. It doesn't eject it. What hormone ejects milk? Oxytocin. Okay? We're not dealing with that. We're dealing with the production of milk. So these breasts get engorged with milk. So much that they be, the nipple gets leaky with milk. But it's not ejecting it. Does that make sense? Okay? So that's what's happening. Prolactin is, is coming out. The signs and symptoms... We have something called lactorrhea. This is where it's going to secrete milk in men and in non-pregnant women or women who are not nursing. Okay? That's what happens with this. You also get amenorrhea. That means without menses. They can also get infertility, a decreased libido, and intolerance. Oh, I'm sorry, impotence in men. Libido. Do you know what libido is? Sex drive. Okay? All right? Um, now... Infertility. So if a woman is breastfeeding, then that's actually a birth control method if you think about it, right? That's actually, you could use the side effects of this. 
which is another, you know, one of the, the pros of, let's say, doing breastfeeding. There's a lot of pros on that, all right? Um, with the antibodies that's in there and so forth. But yeah, that could be also used for birth control, right? Um, there's also something called a null cell adenoma. In this case, this is where this is the second most common pituitary adenoma, about 25% of um, tumors of the anterior pituitary. It's benign, and when I say benign, it doesn't spread, but it can still cause problems, right? So this grows, but it secretes no hormone. So this is a this is a, a anterior pituitary uh, tumor that grows and grows and grows, but starts pressing upwards to where the hypothalamus is. Now think back to anatomy. You got the hypothalamus, and then you got this stalk with the cherry at the end, right? So you got this. That's what the pituitary gland looks like. I agree, right? As right? that pituitary. So as this tumor gets big and big, it's going to eventually press against certain areas of the of the hypothalamus, okay? If it gets so big, it can actually press on the portion of the hypothalamus that usually is going to secrete um, prolactin-inhibiting hormone. Now, the names kind of tell you what's going on. Prolactin-inhibiting hormone. So therefore, if prolactin-inhibiting hormone is supposed to inhibit prolactin coming out, and then normally that means that you're going to have no milk coming out, or no milk being produced, well now this PIH is not going to come out, so this breast is going to produce a lot of milk, right? So you're going to have a decrease of prolactin inhibiting hormone, you're going to increase prolactin, because nothing's inhibiting it, which means you're going to increase milk. So we usually see that, so it doesn't produce any hormone, but because of the growing tumor, it's going to affect other things around it. So again, benign tumors don't mean that it's not deadly. It's not going to metastasize. Yeah, we understand it's not going to metastasize, but it can also be localized problems in that area. Okay? All right, so let's talk about ACTH, also coming from the anterior pituitary. If you have too much, and we call that an ACTH adenoma, about 15% of pituitary tumors are this. They're benign, meaning they won't metastasize, they don't spread. But if you increase ACTH, you gotta know where they target. It's gonna be the adrenal cortex. So you're going to actually make both of the adrenal glands, bilateral, become hyperplastic. They start making more and more cells. When it makes more and more cells, that means, and it hits more particularly the um, zona of fasciculata. Okay, if you remember those different zones in the adrenal uh, cortex, it's going to actually spit out or secrete more cortisol. Does that make sense? Right? ACTH. That's why you need to know that first chart to know where it targets and what does it do. Okay. The symptoms of this is something called Cushing syndrome, which we're <laughs> going to talk about later. The effects is that uh, you're going to have an increase of cortisol, and there's a whole slew of things, different things that cortisol does. You just have a lot more of it. For instance, what does cortisol do to glucose in the blood? Does it increase it? Does it do nothing, or does it decrease it? What does cortisol normally do? You can look at your chart. What does cortisol usually do to glucose in the bloodstream? It increases it. So if you have somebody who has Cushing syndrome, you're already figuring out what's going on. They're going to have a hyperglycemia. You're actually putting yourself in a situation of becoming diabetic, at least until this gets fixed. Right? That's how you're using it. That's why I said, if you know the chart, you can guess what's going to happen. You don't have to memorize it. Okay? Growth hormone, GH. Now, growth hormone, an excess amount of it, okay, symptoms are going to differ between someone who's 14 years old and someone who's 44 years old because those growth plates have fused, those epiphysial plates have fused. So in a child, all right, or someone before 21 years old, they're going to have something called gigantism, okay? In this case, the growth plates are not fused, and they are going to have their long bones grow this way, right, the way we've explained it, all right? 
So they're going to be very tall people. All right? Then what about in people who the epiphyseal plates have fused? Now, they can't grow this way because it's already fused. So instead, they're going to grow this way, that way. Does that make sense? So they're going to have different symptoms. These kids over here are very tall for their age. Okay, they're off the graft. The graft is, they always like plot to see if you're growing properly. Acromegaly, and acromegaly, acro means limbs, megaly means enlarged. So they're, it's not that they're growing this way, it's more that they're growing that way. So in adults, they're going to have a lot of facial features that are going to be very prominent and very specific. Their jaws are going to get big and they're going to protrude out. Their foreheads are going to go forwards this way. Now keep in mind, it's not just bones, it's also skin. Growth, yeah, that's why you need to know where growth hormone goes. It goes everywhere. The heart grows big, the skin grows big, the bones grow big, the muscles grow big, right? So it's everything over there. So the growth plates are already fused, so it has to only grow this way. So they'll get enlarged hands. Their hands will actually look very, because their, their fingers are not going to grow this way, so they don't grow at all because the long bones and it's already, the physio plates have already fused, so they're going to grow that way. So they have more like spaded hands. I'll show you what that looks like. They're going to have hypertension, and they usually die from heart failure. So let's go back to the heart. <coughs> Our heart has four chambers, right? Here's, I don't even know what it's called, correct. You have the four chambers, right? So you're going to have the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. So normally you're going to have a wall over here, and you've got a cavity. So far so good, right? Now in someone who's got acromegaly, this heart, as long as everything else, I mean, everything else is going to grow too, but the heart is also going to grow. It has to grow because it has to pump a lot more blood to the rest of the body that's growing. You can't keep the same heart, and the, the rule of thumb is that your fist is the size of your heart, okay? So you can't, if my body turns into like a giant, I can't have a heart like that. The heart's got to grow. But look at what the heart's going to do. It's going to grow this way. So this muscle is going to get thicker that way. But it also grows this way too. So this muscle is going to expand and get bigger that way. Does that make sense? But then what happens to the cavity? It gets small. Does that make sense? Because it grows. It, it's like your freezer that you have without it. If, uh, if you have a freezer that doesn't defrost by itself, that frost is getting more and more in there. And you, you're going to have a nice big space at first, but then the frost gets in there, and I can only have this way enough to, to put stuff in. The same way here. So now, if this turns into a whole uh, a cavity that's only that big, your cardiac output is going to be very low and can't sustain everything. And the blood pressure is going to be high and all. So you're going to, that's, what, that's what they usually die of, is because of heart failure. That kids, you can't get all that, that blood to all the different tissues because you have this very thick wall that's happening there. And it's going to close up the cavity. Does that make sense? Right? All right? So this is gigantism. Basically, it's just a very tall boy or tall, tall girl. Okay. But acromegaly, and I took this from your, your textbook, and there's all different things over here. You can take a look at it. But this, they have that typical facies. You see the, the tongue gets very big also, right? Because growth hormone goes all over the place. Their jaw is protruding out. The nose gets big. Look at the forehead how big that is. The jaw, you can see how it's, you see how like the jaw is coming out that way? All right? Even the jaw, as it gets bigger, the teeth don't grow anymore. So you now have this jaw that the spaces that the teeth are in are going to get wider and wider, and they start losing teeth because the teeth can't stay in there. And she's showing you the, the tongue how big it is.
right? So these are things that are happening over here. There's that spaded hand I was telling you about. You see how they're short and stubby, all right? So you see, here's a person with uh, acromegaly. You see the skin, how much extra skin's here? And here's on a normal person, okay? In this case here, here's a person who comes to me for the first time. Never seen this person. You know, 48-year-old man coming over here. And um, routine exam. Do his blood pressure. It's 160 over 105. Okay, that could be essential hypertension, which we'll talk about another time. But a keen medical professional might say, you know, this might be this is the first time meeting you. Um, but I'm seeing certain faces, there's certain features on, on the face. I'm not saying this to him, but I'm saying, I'm thinking to myself, there's certain things on his face that might make more sense of this, this hypertension. We, we could treat him for the hypertension, that's it, but I want to make sure I'm treating him for the right thing. So I asked him, oops, sorry, so I asked him, do you have any recent pictures, but not so old, or not so old, maybe like <coughs> two years ago, do you have any pictures of, of you in these? Pulls out his, his wallet. Yeah, I got two pictures. Here's what I looked like two years ago when I just graduated college. And here I was about one year ago when I just got married. You see this gradual change that's happening here? And he wouldn't notice it because he looks in the mirror all the time. So it's a gradual thing. But it's being keen to see if you could pick up on those things and say, hey, He's got some. Now, what I want to do in the next test is I want to get a growth hormone a level, blood level, and see what that is. Because that could be him. I doubt it being like that. That's a big difference after two years. Right? Okay? So, there's Andre the Giant, right? You guys know him, right? Uh, maybe not. He's an actor. He's been in a few movies. Princess Bride. Uh, but he's also a wrestler. Let me just tell you about what happened with him. He had an interesting case. He's from France, and I guess they, at that time they didn't do all the tests and they didn't have all the, um, uh, the treatments and stuff that we take, or he maybe didn't have money. Um, but he had gigantism as a child. So he grew very tall, and then, without any treatment, he then had his, his epiphyseal plate fused, and he continued having this adenoma in his head, and now he grew this way. So now he has features of both gigantism and acromegaly. And my buddy knew him a, a, a long time ago. Um, this isn't him, but he always talked about how he had a can of beer, and you wouldn't see it when he put his hand over it. So what do you mean by that? So I found this on the internet. That's a can of beer, and you can see what his hand looks like. I mean, it's big. Now, how did he die? Heart failure. Why that? So it's making all sense. Okay? Now, other things, too, that they usually get Adenomas, this is where I was telling you about, you get visual disturbances. You need to understand the anatomy of where this stuff is located. Here's the inferior portion of the, of the brain. There's the pituitary gland over here. Okay? This is going to be your optic chiasm, where it kind of crosses over, extends further to the eyeball, so it's not cut off. So there's the optic nerves that go out to the eyeball. Well, I kind of do this with my AMP1 students, but what happens here is that if there's a tumor here, it's going to grow and it's going to press. It is very distinct. The person, what the person sees is very distinct. What they have, is that what you and I see is this. And we can see right there. No problem. In a person who has a tumor that's growing and pressing on the optic chiasm, they're actually going to see this. They lose their peripheral vision. They can only see here. So what this is, this is his nose over here, here's his mouth. 
what we've done. But what happens here is now look, this is what, what we call this is bitemporal. It's not, the, if I said binasal, then we're, we're losing the portion that's close to the nose. Well, we're losing the portion that's by the temple. So this is bitemporal, hemi, because it's half, anopsia, which is blindness. So they get bitemporal hemianopsia. Layman would call it tunnel vision. So how do you test something like this to see if they lose their tunnel vision? Can I borrow you? No, it's fine. Okay, face that way. All right, well, here, come this way, out of the light. Okay, so what we do is this, to test this, to see if they have this peripheral vision wrong. You're facing forward. Now, do you see my fingers? Okay, tell me when you start seeing them. Okay, now that's where he sees it, okay? If a person who's got bitemporal hemianopsia, I would still do this and then say, now I see them. They lost that peripheral vision over here. And that's how you do it. We usually move, you sit down, thank you. Um, but yeah, that we usually move our fingers because it's easier for them to see that as opposed to something where they won't. But it's usually the, the movement over there. So we test for that, okay? And that's bitemporal hemianopsia, okay? Deficiency, we dealt with that already. Pituitary dwarfism, okay? It's the decrease of growth hormone. Now, most cases of dwarfism is due to achondroplasia, right? We dealt with that before when we did uh, bones and joints and muscles. All right, so what happens here is that most cases of dwarfism occur, 70% of cases, by achondroplasia. But the other 30% is due to this growth hormone problem. Remember, when we did achondroplasia, they have a normal size head, an adult head, and a normal adult body. But their long arms, where the epiphyseal plates are, they, the, the long bones and the fingers, they're short and stubby. So they're out of proportion. Well, in a person who's got pituitary dwarfism, because growth hormone goes all over the place, they are more in proportion. I show that picture here. The head is in proportion with the hand and the arm and the legs and stuff. That's why you can look at people and get an idea of what that is. Okay? Questions? All right. FSH and LH, okay, if you have too much of this, all right, this is going to happen in about 10% of cases, but you'll have a gonadotroph adenoma. This is where, the first time we're talking about this, this is where we have a destructive um, tumor, okay? And what's going to happen here is that you're going to have a decrease of FSH and LH, okay? And that's what's going to happen with this. So you're going to have amenorrhea, infertility, decrease of libido, impotence in men. Okay? Then we have the thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, don't want to go too much into this, but if you have this adenoma, it's very rare, but it can happen. It's benign. You have an increase of TS in T3 and T4, which means you're going to have hyperthyroidism. We'll get into that when we get to hyper, when we get to thyroid. Okay? Uh, now, Sheehan syndrome. Sheehan syndrome uh, occurs when, well, we also call it a postpartum pituitary gland necrosis. Postpartum. Partum means labor, as in given birth. Postpartum is after labor. Antipartum or, or uh, prepartum is going to be before labor. So this, is, this occurs after labor when they lost, usually when they lost a tremendous amount of blood. And we'll get into that when we get into um, uh, female reproductive. So what happens here is that they have hypopituitarism, and you get this massive hemorrhaging. Now think about this. Here's someone that lost a lot of blood. You deliver the baby, and now the placenta is stuck in there. And that's, that's preventing the uterus from contracting and stopping blood. So there's going to be tons of blood coming out of it. This is scary, of course. All right? So you have tons of blood. Now one of the things we're worried about is DIC, which we talked about. Okay, losing that much blood. But the other thing is Sheehan syndrome. So what's happening here is that if you have a great amount of blood loss, then that means you're going to have your blood pressure go down. Right? That makes sense. Okay? Which means that there's going to be a decrease of blood flow to all your body organs, including the pituitary. So now you have less oxygen going to your pituitary, so that's going to cause necrosis and infarction of the anterior pituitary. 
which means that the hormones are not going to be secreted. It's a domino effect. You like when I put these arrows here and stuff, but that's what you've got to do in your head. All right? This leads to this, leads to this, leads to this. All right? Diagnosis, it depends on how severe it is. A lot of times the diagnosis isn't made until like a year or two later, if it's very mild. Okay? Usually the most common sign is that you have agalacteria, meaning like you're not producing milk. Okay? So she's trying to breastfeed, but nothing's coming out. Well, if I put that together with a massive amount of blood, and you can see what her hemoglobin is, I can say, let's do, let's get a picture of, of a, a CT scan of the brain and see what's going on. All right? If it's really severe, you could have adrenal insufficiency, hypothyroidism, and so forth. But a lot of times they're mild, but we don't want to leave them going home without the diagnosis of this. Okay? Uh, and this is a picture just showing all those different uh, things about 